Andriy Otschenash, the crew commander of the Kara Nebesna unmanned aerial vehicle complexes in the 4th Brigade of the Rubies Operational Task Force of the Ukrainian National Guard, noted that a significant portion of Russian personnel is seeking to survive and is willing to surrender. The situation on the defense line held by the Rubies Brigade remains tense. For almost a month, the enemy has been continuing assault operations every day, trying to achieve at least some results. However, they do not actually achieve their goals, given the losses they suffer. We are destroying enemy equipment and a significant number of their personnel, Ot Chenash said on Espresso TV. According to the crew commander, there is a certain number of Russian prisoners of war who voluntarily surrender due to their low morale and psychological state. The Russians are beginning to realize that they are being used as cannon fodder. 80% of enemy attacks fail against our brigade's defense line, resulting in significant casualties. This is why a considerable portion of the Russian personnel now wants to survive and surrender. Ot Chenash emphasized. In the early days of the Russian offensive in Ukraine, it was stated that Russian army units were suffering from major morale problems. Then, numerous reports continued to suggest Russians lacked the will to fight. On many parts of the front, it was recounted that Russian units still suffered from supply shortages, high casualties and logistical problems, contributing to their motivation problems. Commentators suggested low morale would affect the Russian war effort. Russian authorities have implemented a series of carrot and stick measures to maintain morale. On the one hand, discipline is rigorously enforced. Coercive measures have been increased. The regime is also suppressing dissent at home against the war. It also encourages soldiers to serve by promising generous pay. The base salary for a soldier is about $2,500 a month, with payment of $39,000 for wounding and up to $65,000 in the case of death. Compared with a median Russian monthly salary of $545, this is good money, especially considering that approximately 15 million Russians live below the poverty line. Russian troops have come within two kilometers of the city of Kurakovo in Donetsk Oblast, build military analyst Julian Ropk reports. In mid-September, Ropk visited the frontline town of Kurakovo, where about 18,000 people lived before the war. At that time, Russian troops were stationed about eight kilometers to the east. In early October, they made a breakthrough, capturing the village of Ostrovskoy and reaching the shores of the Kurakovskoy Reservoir. Now the occupiers are only two kilometers from the town and continue to advance, despite heavy losses. The fighting near Kurakovo is becoming more serious. We see a big breakthrough that was made here, about six to seven kilometers, which have been made in the last month. This is a very narrow strip, like a snake, along which they are going to Kurakovo, Repke noted. Military and political observer Alexander Kovalenko believes that Russian troops will soon begin to attack the city of Kurakovo head-on, using a large amount of equipment. According to him, the occupiers plan to put pressure on this settlement both from the south and from the east. However, expert Ivan Stupik noted that the occupiers can capture Kurakovo without significant effort, forcing the Ukrainian armed forces to retreat from the city, and to do this they need to cut off the key highway, cutting off supplies to our military. The Ukrainian armed forces are engaged in combat clashes with the occupying army of the Russian Federation in the Pokrovsk and Kurakovo regions, repelling numerous attacks by the Russian invaders. Multiple clashes of varying intensity have been recorded in different locations in Donetsk region, with the Ukrainian military successfully repulsing enemy assaults in districts like Vovchansk, Kupiansk, Lyman, Kramatorsk, Toritsk, and more. A man who was convicted in Russia over social media posts which criticized the country's fight in Ukraine was released from prison on Tuesday. Alexei Moskalev, 55, a single father, was met by his daughter Maria outside the jail in Tula region. After his release, Moskalev told OVD Info about his experience spending two months in prison. He likened the conditions inside his cell to a torture chamber that was two meters by one meter in size. At first, I was sitting alone, then they put a second person in, he said. Moskalev also claimed that the jail's floors were rotten, rats were everywhere, coming from the sewers and everywhere. In 2022, 
his daughter refused to participate in a patriotic class at school and made a drawing which said, No to war, and, Glory to Ukraine. He was then investigated by police and indicted over a series of social media posts about Russia's activities in Ukraine. Moskalev was sentenced to two years in prison, but fled house arrest hours before the jail term was handed down. He was arrested in neighboring Belarus and extradited to Russia. Moskalev's daughter was dispatched to an orphanage following his arrest.